G'day cobblers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Hubs Four Wheel Driving, we're going to use this compression tester to check out the health of the Turbo Diesel 6, the 1HDT in Maddie's 80 series. But before we get into the actual testing, let's have a look at exactly how a four-stroke engine works on the inside. So you may well have heard it as suck, squeeze, bang, blow, or induction, compression, power, and exhaust strokes, and we'll describe to you exactly how that works in the next couple of images. But before we get into the induction stroke, it's going to be beneficial to understand the few bits and pieces inside your cylinder. So starting up here, we've got the inlet port. Now that's where your air comes in and is controlled by your inlet valve. Now this is your exhaust valve, and that is obviously the exhaust port, and that usually runs to your tailpipe or your turbocharger. Now this dotted line here is the head gasket, <laughs> which I think might be blown on this engine. But anyway, and here we have the piston. And the piston has piston rings. Usually it has two compression rings and one oil control ring. And that forms a seal against the cylinder walls here. Now your piston obviously is joined to your connecting rod and your connecting rod runs down to your crankshaft, which provides the motivation for your gearbox, out your tail shaft, into your differential, and then puts rubber to the road. Rightio, on with the induction stroke. So during the induction stroke, your piston here is heading south. Now that creates a partial vacuum inside the combustion chamber. And because your inlet valve is open, it sucks in the air, or perhaps is forced in by the turbocharger. Anyway, it fills up your combustion chamber with fuel and air. Now for the compression stroke. Now your piston reaches the bottom of its travel and starts heading back up with both valves shut. So we're compressing the air fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber. Now you may well have heard of a diesel engine referred to as a compression ignition engine. And all that simply means is there's no spark plug up the top here. It squeezes it hard enough that eventually it catches fire. <laughs> That's it. Now, some people will tell you there's an explosion inside there. It's not an explosion, it's a fast burn. It's not fast enough that it's classed as an explosion. So it is catching on fire, but it's just burning fast. And now for the power stroke. So your compressed fuel air mixture here has been ignited and it's forcing this piston back down the ball. Now this is the only stroke out of the four that actually helps propel you down the road. It's the power stroke. And you'll notice during the power stroke, both our inlet and exhaust are both shut. Now for the exhaust stroke. So the energy which was used to propel the piston back down the ball during the power stroke, the piston has reached the bottom of the bore, it's heading back up again, we've got to get rid of those bad gases somehow. So what happens is the exhaust valve opens and our bad gases get thrown out the exhaust either into our turbocharger turbine to start compressing the inlet again or back out the tailpipe. And then we start from the very start again. Well, that escalated quickly. We couldn't actually get this bolt undone in situ. So we had to remove the whole inlet manifold and all the fuel pipes have come off well, at least you'll get a better look at what we're working on. Thank you, Mr. HPD. Thanks a lot. You can certainly see a lot more in here now. And what we've done is pulled out all of the glow plugs. And we'll head over to the compression tester now, and we'll show you how to fit up the adapter. So here's the kit, and here's the glow plug. Now, it comes with a variety of adapters, depending on the glow plug, or perhaps these ones for your injectors. So you have to find out which one matches the thread pitch by trying it gently or lining up the threads or maybe even using a thread pitch gauge. Once you do that, then you can screw this into the glow plug hole and you can pop this adapter into the gauge. There we go. And we'll show you how to prep the engine now. So we've got the adapter and now we can screw that down into the glow plug hole. And there's no need to crank on it, just cinch him down until he's just tight. That'll do. Now we can put the gauge on. And your gauge just simply clips on. And that's it, job done. Only one more thing to do. We need to make sure that we're not supplying fuel to the fuel pump. To isolate the fuel, we need to cut the power to the solenoid valve. So we've pulled off this wire here, down to this solenoid valve here and that's what controls the fuel to the pump for the engine. So taking off that lead will not allow fuel to go through the solenoid valve and we won't have fuel coming out of the pump. 
So we've screwed the adapter in, we've put the gauge on, and now we're going to test it. Now I'll get Matt to turn it over on the engine for about five seconds. So when you're ready, Matt. And that's good. So that's sitting on about 480 PSI. So we'll go through and check every other cylinder. So we've got decent compression in one through six in between about 480 and 500 PSI in each and every cylinder with the exemption of number two. So I'm gonna double check number two and we'll have another look at it. So when you're ready, Matt, could you please kick it over for about five seconds? And there we go, that's about 170 or 180 PSI in comparison with the rest of the cylinders, which are all around 480 to 500 PSI. So we're definitely losing compression in that cylinder. Now we need to work out exactly why. So what we'll do is we'll do what's called a wet compression test. So this is a dry compression test. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of oil into that cylinder. So hopefully it might seal up the rings. And I'll show you in a diagram now exactly what I'm talking about. So in the ring area there, up against the cylinder wall, if the rings are worn out, the compression's gonna leak past and the oil will seal that up a bit. So we'll do another compression test in a second. After we put a bit of oil into the cylinder, a wet compression test, and see if that raises the amount of compression in that cylinder. If it does, that means we have an issue with the rings, probably worn rings or a worn bore. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is a wet test. So I've got my oil here, that's just normal motor oil. I've left the adapter in there, and I'm gonna put two squirts in there of oil. And we'll give that a second to drop down into the bottom of the cylinder and hopefully seal the piston rings. So what we need to be careful of is hydraulicking the cylinder. So what that means is oil is obviously uncompressible and if you fill up the cylinder full of oil and you turn the engine over with the glow plug in there or the compression tester on there, you run the risk of bending valves, bending con rods and buggering up your engine basically. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get Matt to turn it over for a second and it's gonna push out the excess oil. So I'll just get a rag just to catch that excess oil. And I'll get Matt to turn it over for about a second. So Matt, when you're ready. There we go, and you would have seen the excess oil coming out of there. And that makes sure we're not going to hydraulic the cylinder, but still, we've got that oil on our piston and around our rings. So. I'll put on the compression gauge again. So Matt, I'll just reset it. So Matt, when you're ready, can you please uh, give it five seconds? Okay, so that's around about 170 to 180 PSI again. So it's not actually come up at all. So that tells me it's probably not worn out rings or a worn out ball. So we definitely still have a problem because it's pressurizing the crankcase. But what it is, well, that's as far as the compression tester will tell us. We'll probably need to do a leak down test before we can investigate any further externally, or maybe it's just time to rip the head off. And here are the results of the compression test. So along here we have PSI and the cylinder number along the bottom here. Now one, three, four, five, and six, they're all good. They're all around 480 PSI or thereabouts, maxing out at 490 PSI with a minimum of 470 PSI. They're all good. The maximum value in the factory service manual is around about 500 PSI, and the minimum is about 360 PSI. So it's a newer engine, it's only a couple of years old, not even. And all's good, except for number two. And that's where we're having the issue. We're obviously missing compression from somewhere. Engines are essentially air pumps, and this air pump has a leak. All right, guys, so that's a compression test on a diesel 1HDT. Now, the testing worked all right, but it's not a great result, unfortunately, for the mighty 1HDT. It, uh, it requires some attention. So to narrow it down even further, we'd need to do a leak down test. And if you're interested in seeing a leak down test, drop a comment below and we'll get to that video sooner or later. 
Anyway, guys, now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a yell thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks. Get a thumbs down, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Okay. I it's not thrice, but thrice. I don't know. I just threw it in there. I thought it was funny. Well, thrice is, is thrice even a proper word? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was. I heard it somewhere. I thought, oh, that's funky. I should do that. Oh, there we go. Did you go private school? Only, only after grade three. Uh, it shows. It shows. Yeah, no, I, I got out. I mean, so. I got out before they got.